This is a little awkward. Uh, I was heading back to go say bye to Celeste and Cloud, but it turns out we had a tutorial, and so I figured I might as well show this off. So, I was talking about this a little earlier. I might have had it a little mixed up, but yeah, once you master a Mirage's Mirage board, you know, you get a star, and it's awesome, and bonus abilities. Although, if I mentioned one Mirage board, I meant like a whole entire form, or like a whole entire side. You have to master all that in order to get a bonus ability. So, you get a silver star, you get a bonus ability. You get a gold star, you get another bonus ability, you know. You get a star! Woo! Uh, what are you talking about? Whenever you the successfully unlock all of a Mirage's abilities, I get to certify that Mirage as a Master Mirage! And commemorate it by the giving you a star! Uh, okay. Thank you. You're going to want to thank me even the more in a sec. Once a Mirage gets its star, I can be awarded a stat bonus or a bonus ability. The neat, huh? Maybe you've already even noticed? Oh, now that's what I call service. Wow, we'd better create as many Master Mirages as we can. Look at all the upsides. Oh, uh, hey, Tama, give me a star too. Ah, uh, sorry, Lon, but I'm afraid you just aren't the what I call Master Material. I know, can you imagine? Master Lon. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Master Lon. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? I could totally be Master Lon. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if I've put Grimoire in the right hands. But for now, I'll we'll just laugh along. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, what's on your head? Here, help yourselves. Yay, bonus XP! <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, m masters, uh, mastering, does Tama have just a whole bag of gold stars, or stars in general, or something? Um, well, since I'm here, and delaying the progress of everything, I might as well show you that I equipped Cloud and Celeste on my medals. I, I equipped their medals. They cost two stars each, so... Be aware, you know, it's, it's a little costly to do that. All that said, we're, we're really gonna progress, for reals. Wait, can I, can I just warp to, uh... I don't think I can. Coliseum is not what I want, Figaro Castle is definitely not what I want. I guess I'll just go to the Eclipse region. There's nothing left to do. I got nowhere else to be. I gotta go say bye to, uh... Celeste and Cloud in in the story of progress of things. I mean, they'll probably show up in in interventions, but you know, the the role in this whole story is kind of done for the time being. Also, I got the Joyride ability on Chaz's Hyperion form, and that's pretty sweet if I do say so myself, because uh, I, I could definitely put some some points into that Mirage board, master it get it out of the way that'd be good oh looks like everyone's back to normal now another day has been the save all righty then next up is what were we after again the key of tides Will Rain and the Lawn succeed in their noble adventure? Stay the tuned! Tama, hey! Who gave you permission to cut to a commercial break? Put us back on the air! And now, back to the adventures of Lawn and Rain and Tama and a bunch of Mirages and Lawn! Oh, whatever. So, what are we doing? Anybody? Should we go pay one last visit to Celeste and Sid before we head out? I have something to question. Uh, that statue in the middle right there, I was gonna say it reminds me of the boss in Final Fantasy IX, except 
that cameo's right there. So, uh, I, I got a question. Was that representing? Because it looks like a boss in a game. Oh, so you made it through unscathed? Not long after all the trouble started going down, this person with a ghastly pale face attacked me. I thought I was a total goner. But then this total dreamboat with this huge sword came along and rescued me. I wish I could thank him somehow, but I have no idea where he went afterwards. Oh, she's totally talking about Cloud. <laughs> He's so dreamy. Uh, All work and no play makes you go home with lots of money. That's our motto, kiddos. Wait, did you just say... All work and no you play. did. <laughs> so, you know, uh, get that OT. I had my own dreams once. And the Federation branded me a derelict. Now I'll never get to see my dreams come true. Man, fuck the Federation. They ain't do jack for me. I'll be a derelict. I still remember a little bit from when the trouble started and I got turned into a vampire. I think this might sound a little creepy, but it actually felt kind of good. Oh, he's giving in to the dark side. <laughs> I mean, uh, to be honest, I'd, I'd give in to the dark side. It, it's fun. It's, fan it's, it's, it's powerful. It's strength. It's sheer raw energy. Actually, to be honest, they say that light and darkness really have no power of influence, but maybe they do. I don't know. Gil's speaking out of his ass. Sid. Keys, you say? A temple in the deep? Well, I believe I've heard of such a temple in the Besaid region, directly above us. So, about this Besaid place... It sounds like it's the continent, but directly above us. Good. We won't do any falling to get there. Be whatever it's called, here we come! No jokes about B.O. this time? Oh, good. Well, I guess we're going to Final Fantasy X World, Celeste. The town seems to be back on its feet. Still, how can they care so little? Do they not mind their home in chains? Yeah, I guess they just don't care unless it's actively hurting them, huh? It's worse. Some of the poor fools are even thankful for it. They think it's Bahamut that will keep them safe from vampires. Maybe some people just think life under Federation rule is easier. But is it truly easier? When Bahamut takes control, they promise you you'll remain free. But that's not true at all. What does that mean? The whole catch about joining the Federation is that you're asked to become an architect. Someone willing to build a better tomorrow. Okay, but how do they convince people? Well, part of the appeal is that it gives you something to be proud about, but that's far from the only incentive. You see, once you're an architect, you get to live in a cathedral and perform your duties amidst the utmost luxury. You're kept far away from war and strife, never wanting for food, and free to live out the rest of your days in leisure. Oh, dude! No wonder so many people are lining up for the job! Sign me the up for the pampered and well-fed crew! Yeah, but... Don't you think it sounds a little too good to be true? Exactly. Any sane person can see it. Uh, yeah. No one should fall for that stuff. Right? I can't imagine what goes through their heads. Ah, but if you voice your suspicions or reject their luxury, the Federation pushes you right to the bottom. You become dead to the world. Yes, we've seen them. People like that. So no one wants to dig deeper or think harder about it. They nod their heads, oblivious to what it means. Better to take the less complicated path than justify it by only hearing the things you want to hear. It's truly maddening when you consider it. The consequences are right there, but they refuse to look. Unfortunately, Celeste, there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to think things through. It really is so sad. How very true. But hey, once you've made up your mind about stuff, it's not an easy thing to back down. Folks would say, you know, uh, um, oh, yeah, they'd say you lack confection. Wow, well, Mom, that does this sound like a soul-crushing dilemma. I wouldn't the one to give up candy. Uh, I've heard some dumb things, but read it on a scale of dumb to ten, that right there was the dumb Evan. Oh, and... I think the phrase he was looking for, it's lacking conviction. Oh, I knew that. Oh, me too. Then why did you say it? 
<laughs> you are a funny bunch. Hey, there is only one weirdo around, and that's this guy. Huh? But she said funny. And I am not weird. Oh, you are both weird. What? Dude. Yay! I'm the only one who's not the weird. Oh, sorry. You're included. What? I say embrace the weirdness. I don't know what you're talking about. I think it's a compliment coming from Celeste. You know, she's pretty awesome. She knows stuff. You know, I meant to ask, how did you end up working here with Sid? Let's just say Sid and I go back a long way. He's the one who hired me to protect Buzzy! hometown. B Buzzy! Of course, now I stay Buzzy! for other reasons. Someone has to make sure he stays out of trouble. Over half the junk you saw in the train graveyard is stuff Sid destroyed on one of his rampages. Wow, dude. I was wondering how it got piled up. That was Sid? His mind shuts down and he becomes a pathological collector who attacks anything he sets his sights on. There's no pattern to his targets, so he poses a real danger. That sounds pretty rough. So you see, someone has to keep an eye on him, or there's no telling what sort of damage he might do. Wait, so he's responsible for... Well, then who's responsible for the other half, Cactuar? The conductor Cactuar? I mean, like, do, does Cactuar have a vendetta against him? Because, like, trains... What's the password? What, um, Wild Rose. That's right. How did you know that? Well, don't tell anyone else. Here, I'll give you this if you keep it under your hat. What was that? Was that a reference to Final Fantasy 2? It feels like a reference to Final Fantasy. You know, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Ever heard of death magic? It can KO you in one shot, no matter how many HP you have left. Scary stuff, right? But if you're unstacked, you might be able to keep the damage to a minimum. Like, I, I get what he's saying about health points, but, uh, no, like, I, I got a question. Is he quantifying health points? Like, is it, is it, like, an actual thing that you have? I mean, yeah, sure, I get the stat and the reference and, and the stuff and, like, real-world applications and the concept. It's like a, it's like a Kai level, but, or like a, a power level or what have you, but at the same time, it's like, are, are they saying it's a tangible, th you know what, I, I'm looking too far into this. I guess I'm a weirdo along with these guys, although I'm the player, so, whatever. Sid. By the by, do you buy into this so-called Crimson Prophecy? Um, you have to keep in mind that we remember almost nothing about Grimoire. Azure, Crimson, all this prophecy stuff, it just sounds like jibber-jabber to us. Yeah, huh? This is my first time in Grimoire, too, so I don't get it the either. Yep, sails over my head. Yeah, well, Lon, entire navy sail over your head. I suppose that it's fine as long as you're taking it with a grain of salt, but do allow me to add a word of caution. You see... While this library contains every ancient book you can imagine, not one of them mentions anything about a Crimson Prophecy. Wow. So even with all these books, you're still missing one? Mm, no. Anything old enough to be called a proper prophecy would have to be in our archives. Huh? Then why isn't it? Indeed. I'm certain there's a good explanation, which we just aren't thinking of. It's because propaganda of the Federation. Hey, Sid, since the town's got one of those anchor things, doesn't that mean you guys are a part of the Federation now? Really? That would certainly be news to me. Huh? What do you mean? What do you mean you mean? As far as I know, we drove those yahoos off. Whatever it was they thought they were selling. So then what? They took over Tometown by force? Huh? So the vampires were all part of some bigger the plan? What? Oh, no, no, no. They would never... Yes, they would! Hmm. When did the Federation become such thugs? You mean, it wasn't like that before? Oh, well, they were certainly very coercive, but I've never heard of anything quite like this. Well, we have. Bahamut sent a whole horde of goblins to invade Cornelia. Really? Well, you don't say. Hmm. That's just a little bit unsettling. To be honest, I'm surprised we didn't run into any Mirage Tamers. I mean, you figure there might be a soldier or two. That that would make sense to me, but whatever. Come by and visit whenever you like. 
I guess I'm done with plot with you and not done with plot with you, Sid. You do know those monocles you got there. I invented those some years ago. What? Wow, dude. This was back before I got my new body. I was on a grand adventure to find new books, and I noticed that the towns I visited had just the strangest spatial distortions. I naturally suspected the presence of hidden bookshops. For the record, that's not normal. Well, anyway, I decided to make a lens that corrected the distortions. And when I saw a whopping no bookshops and a bunch of weird chains, I made a sad face and gave my dear monocle away. How much of a bibbity file are you, anyway? Later, someone asked how to make the lenses. So I generously passed the wisdom on. And I guess those models found their way to Charlotte's Inn. And that's the story of the monocles. If you don't mind, I am very busy reading. I guess he's done giving us plot. That's fine. I don't think Cloud's here, so I'm. I, I guess there's nothing left but to move on with our lives. So I will shove off and go to a magical place it, called Besaid. And by move on, I mean, I guess, tomorrow. Because really, it's about the end of the part. I was attacked by this mirage, and apparently turned into a vampire. Of course, I can't remember any of it. But it is really scary to think I might have stayed that way forever. Nah, man, think of the power. That's a minotaur. That, that, that's still bugging me. I can't think of what that's from. Because I'm sure it's a reference to some Final Fantasy. Just not sure which one. You have a mini-venture. Hey, you there. Do you have a minute? I've got a little request. See, there's been a mirage infestation in the train graveyard. Is there any chance you could take care of them before they set their sights on our town? Oh boy, guess what I'm doing in between this part and the next. So with that said, uh, actually I might as well finish up the dialogue he's got. Do it? Oh wow, thank you. All you have to do is head to the train graveyard and take out a few mirages. Thanks, we're counting on you. I'm gonna end the part off here. Bye bye!